You're listening to A Voyage Through First Thessalonians, a production of Take Hold Studios. To help us reach more people, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so that you're notified when new content is released. Now, let's get sailing. A Voyage Through First Thessalonians, Part 3. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 4 and 5. Welcome back to the voyage. I hope that you are being blessed thus far. These two verses today reveal a richness to theology that isn't often spoken about or noticed. Number 1. Election Paul simply states that his audience has been chosen by God. This is one of the clearest and succinct statements of the doctrine of election. The doctrine of election is that God is the one who chooses whom will be saved or not. The Bible teaches that salvation is by God's election, not by man's selection. God chooses who will receive his mercy and who will not. Number two, election in God's love. In verse four, we see that being chosen by God is a sign that God loves you. Paul says that he knows that they are loved by God because God has chosen them. This seems obvious enough, But sometimes the doctrine of election is taught with a furrowed brow and a scowl. Many caricature John Calvin, who emphasized the sovereignty of God over salvation, and all things for that matter, as a cold, hard-hearted man who enjoyed the fact that God had not chosen everybody. This caricature is inaccurate, and those who teach election in a cold manner are missing the richness with which Paul uses here. Paul links God's act of electing with his attribute of love. When God elected the bride for Christ, it was out of his eternal love, mercy, and grace to fallen man. It wasn't a cold, mechanical operation. If we remember that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, as Romans 3.23 states, we therefore know that all mankind deserves God's anger and wrath, so the fact that God has shown mercy at all, should soften our hearts. Number three, the security of election. A consequence of embracing the doctrine of election is security in his sovereign hand, because he is the one who has done the choosing and saving from beginning to end, we know that we are secure. Another consequence of this security is that we will want and desire to stay by his side. We will have the desire to abide in the vine, as Jesus encouraged us to do in John 15. Some have wrongfully claimed that the doctrine of election encourages people to not stay close to God because he is going to keep us in his hand regardless of what we do anyway. What I have found is that those whose hearts are truly softened by this doctrine and embrace it are drawn closer to God. This was the case for me. Anyone who walks away from God after studying the doctrine of election can't blame the teaching of the Bible for their actions. The Bible still places the responsibility squarely on them. Number four, the evidence of election. Paul then shows what the evidence of God's election looks like, and this is what we were already getting at in the last section. To sum up verse five, Paul tells the Thessalonians that he knows God has lovingly chosen them because of their warm, enthusiastic embrace of the gospel. Paul says that when the gospel was preached to them, it was received with full conviction. The power of the Spirit was evident in their eager response to the gospel. This is not mere intellectual assent. Full conviction means that their lives were turned around. And this is what we were getting at earlier. There are those who may intellectually assent to the doctrine of election, but lacking the power of the Holy Spirit, they haven't embraced the realities of it with full conviction. 
the doctrine hasn't made the descent from their head into their heart and manifested itself in their lives. Doug Wilson is known for saying that, quote, your theology needs to come out your fingertips, end quote. Studying theology like the doctrine of election is a worthy endeavor, but unless it can be seen in your daily life, it's a futile endeavor. I encourage you to make a point of studying and receiving biblical teaching with full conviction, but ensure that it doesn't just stay in your head. Well, that's it for this time. I hope that you are edified and built up. I am eager to see what's on the horizon on our next voyage through 1 Thessalonians. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. 